In our second video for chapter 2b on carbohydrates and lipids, we're going to have another short one. We're only going to cover two slides. And in this one, we're going to talk about what is a hydrocarbon. And when we talk about hydrocarbons, we're going to talk about how carbon can make the four bonds at once using its four valence electrons. The second part of this video, we're going to deal with the functional groups. And I believe we only need to know three or four of them. They're very short, they're very simple, but you are going to have to know the name, the structure, and the special function that it gives that portion of the molecule. So let's learn about hydrocarbons. The name hydrocarbon pretty much tells you what it's made out of. The hydro part refers to hydrogen. So this one's gonna have a lot of hydrogens in it. And then obviously carbon refers to the molecule carbon, which has a symbol of C. So a hydrocarbon is only made out of two things, hydrogen and carbon. The simplest hydrocarbon over here is methane. Methane has a chemical formula of CH4. It only has one carbon and it has four hydrogens around it. Now these blue ones, these blue electrons right here, these are the ones from carbon. I'm going to color those in red here. So carbon has four valence electrons. It only has six. It has two in its inner energy level, and that one's full, and then it has four on the outside. Now if you can remember the octet rule, most atoms like to have eight electrons in its outer shell. Well, carbon is going to be four short, so it's going to get its other four by sharing electrons with other atoms. And in this case, it's going to be hydrogen. So we have a hydrogen here, hydrogen there, one here, and one there. Now each of these hydrogens, let's pick a different color here, we'll use black. Okay, each of these hydrogens are going to bring their own electron. Now hydrogen is one of the weird atoms. It's really happy when it has two electrons in its outer shell. So hydrogen is only going to look like this. It's only going to get these two. All right. So it doesn't have an octet rule for it. It has a two at rule or something like that, whatever, a couple rule. All right. So as we can see here, once these four atoms have joined with this carbon, everybody's going to be happy. Carbon is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and eight. So it's got its eight in its outer shell. It's nice and stable and it's happy. Hydrogen, if you remember, it wants two. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, and two, and everybody's happy. This is a very stable molecule. All right. Other hydrocarbons we have over here, if we can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons in a chain and a bunch of hydrogens on the outside. All right. So that there is a carbon, and all these ones on the outside, those are hydrogens. Okay, over here we have benzene. Uh, this is an organic compound that you're going to find in gasoline. You're going to find it in some solvents. Um, try to avoid it. It is a carcinogen. Carcinogens are molecules that will lead to cancer. And as we can see here, this carbon has one, two, three, and four. This right here is what we call a double bond. Now each of these lines represents two electrons. So these two electrons are going to hydrogen. And as we look at this carbon right here, one, two, three, four. Four times two equals eight. So we have satisfied this octet rule and every carbon is bonded with four things and each hydrogen is bonded with one. Okay. Now one of the things we want to remember about hydrocarbons is that they're all nonpolar. So none of these will actually dissolve in water. But a lot of our hydrocarbons can be used as, as fuel. They're often uh, carbon-based fuel. In, fa in fact, methane over here, we usually refer to this as natural gas. Okay, So if you have a gas heater, uh, either on your stove or a gas water heater, it's going to use natural gas. And of course, any of the gas outlets in your science lab are going to be fueled with natural gas. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. All right, these are the functional groups. And, and functional groups are really, really important because a, a hydrocarbon essentially is pretty boring. It's only got carbons. It's only got hydrogen. It's nonpolar. It won't interact with water. And most living things are full of water, so you have to have chemicals that are going to interact with water to be able to do the chemistry of life. And so what we can do to a hydrocarbon is we can add these special things to it 
to give this hydrocarbon chain special properties. Uh, a great analogy would be this of ice cream. Think of a hydrocarbon as boring vanilla ice cream. And then when you go to like a Cold Stone Creamery or a Friendly's Ice Cream Shop or a Baskin Robbins or even your, your, your neighborhood ice cream stand, you're often going to add chocolate chips, crushed Oreos, sprinkles, uh, hot fudge, all that stuff to make your boring vanilla ice cream much more exciting. So think of a functional group as simply a topping you're going to put on the ice cream. All right. Now, for our purposes, we only need to memorize three of them. And we have this sort of kind of table on here. Now, if you're in my class, you're going to get a worksheet where you're going to be able to clean this up. All right. Our first group is called a hydroxyl. If you remember that hydroxide ion from our acids and bases, they're very similar. It's an OH group. Okay. It only has an oxygen and a hydrogen. OH. Okay, now this is polar. Now, because it's polar, that means that it can interact with water really well. All right, so it's going to be able to dissolve in the water. Uh, your alcohols are going to have these, and a lot of your, uh, your sugar molecules are going to have these also. Okay, the next one is an amino group. Amino has a formula of NH2, and if you draw it here, there's the N, there's one H, there's the second H, and then this R just represents whatever it's attached to. So the rest of the hydrocarbon chain. All right, now these act as a base. So they're going to act like Drano, baking soda, etc. And in fact, we're going to find these in amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of a protein. And in fact, an amino group becomes the NH2 part of an amino acid. The third and final one is a carboxyl group. Now, if you look at the word here, if when you see carb, you know it's going to have carbon in it. And then the oxyl kind of refers to up here an OH. So oxyl refers to an OH, or specifically an oxygen. Uh, if you just have the letters, it's C O O H, CO. But I personally like to draw it like this down here. So you have a carbon with a double bonded oxygen connected to an OH group. Now, a lot of students will get confused that they're going to see this right here and they're immediately going to think it's a hydroxyl group. But you need to pay attention. If this OH is attached to a carbon atom that is double bonded to an oxygen, that makes it a, a carboxyl group. C-O-O-H. You know, this one acts like an acid. Now, an acids will have a pH below 7, if you remember that from the previous one. All right, so any organic molecule that has the word acid in it is going to have a carboxyl in it. So the acid part of an amino acid is a carboxyl, COOH. And a fatty acid, which we're going to find in lipids, they're also going to have a carboxyl, C, whoops, COOH. Or if you draw it, C, double bonded oxygen, and an H. Okay? Now, you want to make sure that if you're one of my students, that you know this one because we need to know what these functional groups do. It's gonna make learning about carbohydrates a lot easier, lipids, and of course proteins and nucleic acids. Functional groups make these boring carbon chains do all the magic that it takes to do the extremely complicated chemistry that makes you and I go for our lifetime, which essentially is, you know, 80 years or plus. In fact, if you're a student born in the 21st century, you should live to be 100. We expect you guys, if you're born in the 21st century, to live to be 100 years old. So you basically have a chemical lab inside you that's doing all the chemical reactions that keep you alive. And that's done through the magic of these functional groups that you see on your screen. All right. Another pretty short video. Uh, the next one's going to be a little bit longer. We're going to start getting into details of carbohydrates and lipids. But we're on our way to getting this section done. So make sure you keep it up in your studies, and we'll catch you on the next video.